Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul, and in this Shrek Game to the Comp video, we're going to be tackling a couple of supposed Ryzen CPU benchmark leaks which have popped up on the internet. Now, initially, I wasn't going to cover these, but a few people, Tom being the first one, I'll obviously hold back the second name for privacy reasons, messaged me and said, what do I think of them? So, I thought I'd comment, although it's going to be kind of a shorter video than most of my recent ones. So essentially, a couple of websites have popped up, and it's already going over Reddit and various other forums, and they cite a couple of different benchmarks, one being Cinebench R15, one of the more popular ones, and the second being Fritz Chess Benchmark. Now, these are Chinese um, folks who have gotten hold of the chips, and have posted these and then obviously they've started to circulate around the internet as they tend to do. But <clears throat> let's first of all take a look at the scores. So looking on Cinebench, they are using the CPU. Now just for your reference, they are of course showing around 1200 points. I'm just going to round it up because uh, 12 points don't really mean that much which is slightly faster than something along the lines of a 6700K, which is probably going to get them along, you know, the 900 to 950, 7700K is probably going to be slightly ahead of that. And obviously, if you're going along the lines of a 6900K, that's around 14 to 1500 um, CB, which is pretty high, but obviously considerably higher than the Ryzen. Now, Fritz chess benchmark is a little weirder the particular score for the ryzen is showing as 36.86 i'm going to be pretty exact with this one which is actually ever so slightly higher than something along the lines of a 6700k or presumably a 7700k which is probably going to get around 35 ish points but the 6900k We'll probably get around 45 to 48. Once again, I'm giving around because it does depend on the memory configuration you've got, the, you know, what other applications are running in the background. So I'm giving you the rough ballpoint figures and you can probably choose the in between the medium. Now, I've got multiple issues with these benchmarks, multiple. The first one is that there is no reference even on the CPU's clock speed. For that matter, there's not even a reference on the amount of memory that's installed in the system. And for that matter, we can't even see if it is, well, you know, AMD. For all we know, it could be another CPU entirely that's clocked at like 1 megahertz. Okay, I'm slightly exaggerating, but you get the idea. Another problem is we don't know when these leaks or what stage, assume it is just for a moment Ryzen, we don't know the stage of the processor in terms of the, you know, what, when the engineering sample was created. That's the word I was looking for. So, just for the sake of argument, it could have been from earlier this year when the CPU was struggling to hit 3 gigahertz, or it could be a modern sample. Now, am I saying that I think Ryzen is going to ruffle stomp in every single benchmark and something along the lines of a 6900K or a 7700K, obviously if we're talking about next year, are going to have absolutely no prayer in taking on the AMD behemoth? Of course not, because ultimately I don't have the benchmarks. All I can do is do what I've done a couple of times previously and go through official leaks well, I say official leaks, that makes no sense, but official benchmarks of what AMD have shown. But I will say that they're probably showing you the applications that Ryzen is working best in. Therefore, your mileage will probably vary. And I've said it before, and I'll say it a thousand more times. Generally speaking, different applications will run differently on different processors. Therefore, when a company decides to show you a game, let's just, for example, say that... Um, you know, next year the Vega graphics cards come out and AMD decided to show you just for example Rise of the Tomb Raider running on the graphics card well, yeah, okay, they're probably very confident that the architecture of their GPU lends itself very well to Rise of the Tomb Raider on the other hand, if they very rarely show another game running then there's a good possibility that it might not beat NVIDIA in that particular graphics benchmark now that isn't always the case, and typically I will say that 
marketing wise companies very rarely lie what i mean by that as a hardware reviewer i have been given review guides now they are generally under embargo so i can't show you what they look like but basically there's nothing special about them there's no like well you can do this you can do this but you can't do that instead it's more here are the system specifications that we run the tests on and here's the results we get with the driver revisions that we're running done and the idea behind that is simply to calibrate your system it's not to give you the indication to get different results is to say well you know they're getting 57 frames a second in doom and 4k just for example and i'm getting i don't know 82 there's probably something wrong there so what what am i doing wrong have i got something configured wrong have i got a different graphics option have i you know not ticked something what's going on or it could be the reverse they could be getting once again 57 frames a second in doom and you could be getting 32 and you think well there's obviously some driver hiccup or something else which is causing the for example the gpu core to down clock so let's figure this out and if they send you review samples the purpose behind that is if you keep getting uh, wrong results then you'll contact the company whether that's msi whether that's amd whether that's nvidia intel whomever and say okay could you work with me to fix this issue and then they'll put you through to a technical support guy and they'll basically go through it and do some bug fixing for you and figure out why you're having those issues essentially in the case of AMD showing off, let's just say, for example, Cinebench or Handbrake, I'm going to assume that they're being pretty genuine about this because otherwise it doesn't look very good because it only takes for a reviewer to get this. Look at what AMD did. And let's say for the sake of argument, they do a test and it's completed in 50 seconds. And then we get the actual same piece of uh, silicon, or we get a finished piece of silicon, and it suddenly completes in 72 seconds. We're going to say, hang on a minute, there's something not right here. And then obviously, if every website does the same thing, we're going to call AMD and not trust them. So I do believe that the official benchmarks are fairly accurate. I do believe, however, they probably have chosen benchmarks which very typically suit the rise and load. But then again, with that said, it could be, for all we know, that some of the instructions are not actually um, put onto the processor yet, and that's why they've chosen specific workloads. As for these benchmarks, well, if you want to trust them, that's totally up to you. I'm not telling you what to do with your opinion. Personally, I have some serious reservations because you can't see enough. Typically with leaks of this nature, especially if they're taken via camera, you will notice a pattern of where there's like CPU Z or something else open on screen. And that will show you the workload of the core. For example, it will show like all 16 threads maxed out at 100%. And then you can say, gee, golly gosh, I've at least got some level of confidence in these. But I'm very skeptical about these results. I'm not saying that they're wrong because ultimately I don't know. But, you know, I'm just saying super massive, massive truckload of salt with them. And there you go. Anyway, thought I'd let you know about this one, as I said, because several people have messaged me. So, you know, there you've got my opinion. Anyway, take care of yourselves. Bye for now.